Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You and welcome back to my kitchen. I'm going to show you some of my tricks to make an amazing chili. Now, everyone has a different chili recipe. I don't even have one written down. Um, it's probably different every time. So you can take your favorite chili recipe and just utilize these tips that I'm going to give you and your chili will taste even better than it has. Our first thing, and I just discovered this in this last year that I really love. The first thing is I use fresh ground beef. I didn't know I could get fresh ground beef, and this means fresh daily. It is ground daily at this store. So I love buying this ground beef. Yes, it's a little pricier. I get it at Fresh Market, which is a high-end grocery store that when you walk in, you know, you hear all that beautiful classical music and it's dimly lit and you're automatically like, oh, this is a great experience. This ground beef is $5.99 a pound. Normally, okay, $5.99, I make a big thing of chili with just one pound of meat. But today my mommy's coming over and so I have to put two pounds in it because she loves her meat in her chili. So it's a little bit more expensive this time, but fresh ground beef is absolutely spectacular. You can actually taste the beef flavor. Sometimes I feel like ground beef is just filler. It has no flavor. You have to add, if you have to add garlic, salt, pepper to it to give it any flavor, what's the point? This has flavor from the start. And so that's why tip number one is fresh ground beef. Because I have time, I'm gonna be putting this all in my crock pot, but because I have a little extra time today, I am going to brown my ground beef with my onion and get that going. Because I have a little extra time, I'm still putting it in my crock pot, but I'm gonna ground my two pounds of ground beef with my onion and with my garlic. And that's tip number two. You should always be using, well, fresh garlic, but I'm a little lazy with the fresh garlic. I don't like the way it sticks to my fingers, the peelings and that. So once a month, once every six weeks, I make a big jar of minced garlic. It lasts, I've had it last even longer than six weeks. It tastes great. It's so convenient. And so that is tip number two. Use good quality fresh garlic or some minced. Now, yes, I have been known, I do sometimes use um, granulated garlic or powdered garlic, and that's usually when I'm lazy uh, or when I'm grilling and garlic burns really easy, so I use the granulated or powdered. But for soups and chilies, you wanna use some fresh garlic. So let's get that meat going. All right, our ground beef is nice and browned and so are onions and that is tip number three if you have the time before you put in the crock pot to brown your ground beef onions and garlic you're going to bring out more flavor doing it this way than just putting your raw meat in here and your raw onions and your raw garlic there is a process involved in the sauteing that is going to release more flavor and the browning of the meat is giving you more flavor. So make sure you get all those bits off of this pan. So let's get this in here, meat done. That was the hard part. Our next tip, high quality tomato products. Now I love, there are two brands of uh, tomatoes that I love that are like my babies. Um, I love the Pomi brand, Pomi Pomi. These are on the top shelf of the supermarket. They're pricey, but this is a lot. And this, this was like five bucks. I don't think that's bad for 52 ounces. This is one of my favorite products. I love this for tomato soup also. Um, so, and I get the chopped tomatoes. Now you can also use my other favorite, which is the Cento brand. And it's um, in it, it looks like this. This is my tomato paste by Cento, but it's got this yellow can that looks like this. And and the San Marzano tomatoes are absolutely spectacular. And they are certified San Marzano. You'll find some of those other brands that are really common, like Hunt's. They'll say San Marzano style tomato. That's not a San Marzano, and that's why it costs $1.50 less for a big can. The Cento is expensive. These cost more, 
but I guarantee you, if you use these products in your chili and any other soup or pasta sauces or whatever, you are gonna get a much better tasting sauce, soup, what have you. I like my chili on the um, thicker side. Some people like more of a soupy chili. My mom makes more of a, a soupy chili, but that's up to you uh, which kind you like. You would just add more, more uh, stock of some sort to get it more soupy. Is that a word, soupy? I don't know. Okay, I'm not gonna put all that in, and I also put a tablespoon of the Cento um, tomato paste in here. Now I'm decided I want a few tomato chunks. So if I put this all in here, it's almost looking like a tomato sauce to me, and I don't want that. So I'm going to get a, a jar, a big jar of my Cento San Marzano's and put in here. And who knows, maybe I'll use all of this also. We'll see. Like I told you, my chili is different every time I make it. Okay, I didn't have my Cento, but I did have these. These I got for a buck a piece, so I thought, oh, I'll get them. So if you don't have the highest quality, you know, I mean, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So I'm using these, which still are a higher quality than the Hunts and the other brands. Okay, now let's go on to the next tip. On to our next tip, which is beans. Now, I make my own beans from dried beans and then I freeze them in what I think is about a can. Actually, it's a little more than a can, but I freeze them so I have here some navy, or not navy beans, what are these? The red ones. Yeah, navy beans. I have navy beans and then I have some white northern beans. I'm gonna put both of these in and I have black beans also. And I'm realizing, wow, I've got a lot of chili here already. I don't know if I'll need the black beans. Um, so uh, we'll see. Okay, time for our chili and um, our cumin. Now, if you are using those dollar spices uh, at like Dollar General or uh, Dollar Tree, you're gonna get food that tastes like a dollar. If that's all you can afford, then that's fine. Use that. It's not like I'm using anything really high quality. I am using just my Publix brand chili, but I have found there is a difference with some of those dollar products. I probably have one or two of them in my pantry, but I try to have um, a little better quality. My favorite brand of spices is the, I don't know if I'm saying this right, the Badia. I find those are high quality spices. A lot of times you can find them in the Hispanic section of your grocery store. Um, and they're higher quality and they're still pretty reasonable. Now I do also like, um, Aldi has a Simply Nature brand that I like and a little pricier and they're organic, but I think they're great. And then, you know, you get into the McCormick's and those higher up ones. Those are all great choices. Just try to stay away from the 99 centers. So we are gonna put in two tablespoons of chili powder into our goodness. And I'm gonna start with like a teaspoon, well, no, half teaspoon of cumin. Cumin is so strong, so you gotta be careful. So we're gonna get that all mixed in. See how it's a thick chili? So I have to decide, do I wanna put my black beans in and have it super thick or add water and have it run here. But I already have my black beans all thawed, so we're pouring those in. Okay, on to our next tip. This chili smells so amazing. One thing that I don't have that I love in my chili that you don't get often at restaurants is mushrooms. Um, I don't have any right now, so I'm gonna go to the store and do my grocery shopping, so I'm gonna add some mushrooms later. So that's just my thing I like in my chili. But this next tip isn't just for your chili. This is just in general. So when I cook, I use a lot of multicolored peppers and I try to buy those small ones because it's cheaper. Um, really, chili is the only thing I like green pepper in. And it's like, oh dang, I never have it on hand when I want to make chili. So I use the other peppers. But the other peppers don't have the same flavor as green peppers. So you know what I do? Watch this. Getting in the freezer. And I'm pulling out a whole 
frozen green pepper. I just buy them and shove them in the freezer like this. And if I don't use it all, then I put it in a little Ziploc. But I mean, the seeds are in this and everything. That's how lazy I am, guys. I just throw it in there. I now do this with poblano peppers uh, because again, not often do I cook with poblano peppers, but when I'm making something Mexican and it seems a little boring, you throw a poblano pepper in there and it's fantastic. So um, yeah, that's my, my tip for you to do, or you can just use, just one second. You can use something like this pepper stir fry. Now, I keep this in my fridge, freezer, just in case I don't have this. That's how well stocked I am, guys. I know I'm crazy. But so these just are in there, or if I'm super lazy and just I'm tired and I need some, some peppers and there's onion in here, I'll just go to this. So those are just some tips that go for any food, not just your chili. To get your peppers soft enough, just run it under some cold water or warm water and it'll start to soften right up just for like 20, 30 seconds. And then um, it's much easier to cut. All right, so my peppers are cut. I like them in big chunks so that um, if someone doesn't like green pepper, they can take them out. And then also I leave the ribbing in. The ribbing is high in vitamin C and I believe riboflavin. So um, this is about the size I make them. You can make them whatever and they are super good for you. Okay, we'll get those added in. Yummy. This is a thick chili, guys. I'm gonna have to add some uh, broth. It's just a little too thick for me. Okay, we're adding about a cup of water and that's gonna take it to the brim. Our last secret ingredient, tip, weapon, whatever you choose to call it, is what I love is better than bouillon. Now I could have put in some beef broth in here and that would have been great, you know, if I had beef broth on hand. I have some in the freezer, but I don't, you know, chili is supposed to be an easy, quick thing. So I have my organic, better than bouillon, and this one happens to be beef flavor because, you know, the, I do have beef in here, but you can also use the chicken in here. You can use the vegetable base one. And this, I didn't put any salt in here. So this is going to add some oomph. This is going to add a lot of flavor. So like when I read the ingredients, this is roasted beef broth, yeast extract, which is a um, flavor, flavoring, salt, some sugar cane, barley malt, uh, potato flour. You know, it does not have all that nasty stuff in it because it's the organic version. So I'm going to put in like a tablespoon. We're gonna get that mixed in there. And uh, we're gonna get this going. Get all these ingredients together. I'm gonna go to the grocery store. Then when I come home, I'll put in my mushrooms. And you know, mushrooms don't take as long to cook, so that's okay. And also, you need to taste this before you serve it. It may need more salt. It may need more beef base. It may need more cumin. So just taste your way through a dish, especially when you're not using a recipe. But even with recipes, you know, we all have different taste buds and we all like different things. So you should always be tasting the food you're making. I also, when I want spicy chili, I add a can of Rotel tomatoes in there. And that really gives it the spice that I like. Since I have my family coming over and some of them don't like spice, I will not be putting the Rotel tomatoes in. Instead, I will be serving it with hot sauce on the side. And there you have it, an amazing chili that you don't even need a recipe for. And you learned so many tips and tricks for your chili as well as your other soups, sauces, what have you. Thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks For You. Please subscribe below and I would love to hear from you with a thumbs up or a comment.